Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new edition of In The Shop. And I've got a really good one for you today. You know, normally we're out here in the shop and I'm showing you lures, I'm showing you modifications, ways to rig baits. Today we're gonna do a little more theory-based instruction talking about fall fishing, how to catch bass in the fall. You know, when you say fall fishing, it's not as easy as lumping it into one little category. You know, fall fishing, the fall period, is a little complex, and we could actually break it down into three separate segments. So I want to talk a little bit about those three distinct periods in the fall and how fish move around during that time period. You know, before we get into that, let's define fall a little bit. Let's define when does this fall period start? Um, no matter where you're at in the country watching this right now, no matter where you're at in the world, there's some general terms we could put on when the fall period starts, when fall fishing starts. And here are the generals. Here's a real easy way to talk about when this starts, okay? Basically, fall starts, the fall period starts when the air temperature starts to go down a little bit, right? So it's hot, heat of the summer, it's been hot all summer long, it's been in the 80s, it's been in the 90s, all of a sudden your air temperature starts to go down. Now your air temperature are in the mid 70s, the low 70s, right? So your air temperature is starting to drop down. Second thing is water temperature, right? Same thing, in the heat of the summer, all summer long, your water temperature has been really high. It's been in the high 70s, it's been in the 80s, and some places in the country, some places in the world, water temperature's in the 90s in the summer. But now, you watch your water temperature and your water temperature is starting to go down, starting to trickle down. So it goes from 80 degrees to high 70s. It goes from the high 70s to mid 70s. You start to see a water temperature plummet. And last but not least, your days become shorter, right? You know, so you know in the summer, super long days, right? 10, 12, 14 hour days where that sun is shining. Lots of light during the day. But now as fall approaches, right, those daylight hours are shorter and shorter. There's less sun, there's less light during the course of a day. All these things are triggers for fall fishing. And you know, it's interesting because the fish can't read the fish don't have internet, the fish don't have a calendar, but those things trigger that fall period for the fish. They instinctively know when that air and water temperature start going down, when the days become shorter, they instinctively know that fall is here. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now I wanna talk to you about these three distinctive periods of fall fishing. These three separate stages of fall fishing. And, and it's so amazing to me that over the years you can really look at these periods and say, man, this is identifiable. These fish do the same thing year after year during the fall, okay? And here they go, and we're gonna, we're gonna discuss them in order, but here are your three main fall stages that happen. We'll start in the beginning. The first one is, you've got the early fall transition, the early fall pattern, right? It's, it's that period when the fish are leaving their summer pattern and moving into the fall pattern. That early fall transition, early fall pattern that happens. That's in the beginning of the fall period. Then right in the middle, as fall really kicks in, 
as your temperatures continue to drop, water and air temperatures continue to drop, you've got that middle period in the fall that I like to call the fall feed. The fall feed. And this is one of the funnest times in the fall to fish because the fish are gorging, the fish are eating, the fish can really get schooled up, they're chasing. I've caught a lot of fish in that middle period, which is the fall feed. And then last but not least, we have the third period during the fall, which is called the late fall transition. The fall movement that happens in the last segment of the fall. Once again, relating it back to air and water temperature, now they're really plummeting. Your water temperature is really dropped. You notice a, a big difference in air temperature. Your days are super short. Now your fall fish are leaving that fall pattern. And guess where they're headed? They're heading to their winter time pattern. So that third segment, I like to call the late fall transition. Okay, so three separate segments of fall fishing. Let's start with the first one, and that's early fall transition, right? The early fall period. Um, once again, your water temperature was super hot all summer. The fish were in locked in their summer pattern, which is current, uh, thicker cover, or especially deeper water. And as they feel that water temperature start to go, and they, they notice those days are getting shorter, they start to really key on one thing. And it's a movement. And it happens because of this one thing. You ready? You're going to hear me say it in each of these periods. You're going to hear me keep saying this word over and over. Here it goes. You ready? Bait. Bait, 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 bait. Bait in the fall. Trumps everything. Throw everything out the window and think about bait. And that really is the main reason that during this early fall transition, this, this fall movement, this first early fall movement that happens, the fish are moving to follow the bait, to follow their food source, right? They know it's coming. Again, think about this as an instinctual thing. Um, in a lot of parts in the country that get super cold, in some parts of the country that it doesn't get super cold, but it gets cooler, fish are instinctively feeding up. And because of that, in this early fall transition, the fish begin this movement. They're moving from where they spent their summer, especially deeper water, and they start moving to follow the bait, to follow their forage. And where is the forage moving to? It's real simple, ready? The forage is gonna make a shallow movement, a, a, a shallower movement, an upward movement, right? A lot of times in the fall, I want to talk about it as this movement from here to there, back to there, okay? So in this early fall transition, they're following that bait as the bait starts to move. In a lot of lakes, rivers, reservoirs, ponds that we're fishing, this is a shallower movement. The bait is going to go shallow, okay? So what I'm looking for in this movement is fish following the bait shallower in, you ready for this? This is real important. Creeks, pockets, and shoals and humps on places that don't have creeks and pockets, okay? So creeks, pockets, and shallow shoals or humps, even flats on lakes that don't have creeks and pockets. And the reason those fish are moving in that creek, in that pocket, the reason these bass are moving on top of that shoal or that hump or getting on top of that flat is not because they're just, they want to go on a vacation and they want to move. It's because they are following the bait. They're following their food source, right? So in this fall transition, early fall transition period, I'm looking for the stopping places as those 
fish are following that bait. And the, the great thing about it is the bait, they're stopping in those same places, right? So in a creek arm, you know, if my, if my finger was a creek and here's the main lake and these summertime fish were in the main lake and they're following that bait back in the creek, these fish are going to stop on points. They're going to stop on targets that stick out and break that line, which is the contour lines that go back in that creek. Okay? There's always contour lines. There's always depth changes leading up to a creek, leading up to a point, I mean a pocket, right? Or a shoal or a hump or a flat. There's a contour break leading up to that high spot. Those fish are going to stop on things that stick out on the way there. It could be a main point. It could be a secondary point. It could be a lone dock. It could be a giant lay down tree. It could be a point of grass heading back into that pocket, heading back into that creek. That's the places I'm looking for. So stopping places on the way to go to the next period which is the fall feed, okay? So fall transition, fish are moving, they're transient. You hear that word transition? Transient fish, fish that are sliding, fish that are moving, following bait. As they move, they're stopping on points, secondary points, targets that break that contour, okay? That's your early fall transition. Again, water temperature based, it's when that temperature first starts dropping. When your air and water temperature first starts dropping, that's your early fall transition, okay? Let's get into the second phase now. This is the one that, that is gonna make you smile because this is the one where you can catch a ton of them. And this is the fall feed. This is the middle segment, okay? Now, your water and air temperatures are really starting to drop. Now they're really starting to, to make a big difference. Um, just as an example, your water temperature's been in the mid 80s all summer. Now you look at your water temperature gauge and it's in the 70s, it's in the high 60s. You are right in the fall feed, right? There's that major drop in water temperature, major drop in air temperature. You had short sleeves all year. Now when you go fishing, you're putting on a jacket, right? You're putting on a light coat. The, the leaves are starting to change in certain parts of the country. Look at the leaves on the trees. Your leaves are changing color. These are clues that this is the fall feed now, right? The days are shorter now. And now the fish have followed the bait. There's that word again, bait, 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 bait. Now the fish have followed the bait all the way back into the creek. They followed the bait all the way back into the pocket. Last but not least, they followed that forage, that bait, all the way on tops of the shoals and humps and on tops of those flats now, right? So now, don't think as much about transient fish, not transitioning fish, they're there. They're in the back, they're on the flat, they're on the hump, because that's where their food is at. You know, it's interesting because that bait is making the movement for the same reasons the bass are. They're trying to get their last little groove on, they're trying to feed up, and that bait's trying to get fat too before the winter comes. So the bait's there, the bass are there, and this period's called the fall feed. And now they're gorging, now they're eating. This is where when you find them, they're piled up, right? Uh, you, you can throw a top water, Get 20 bites on a top water. Put the top water down, throw a little swim bait. Get 20 more bites on a swim bait. They're gorging, they're eating. You know, once again, I don't care where you live. If you're in upstate New York or Florida, the fish know the coldest water period's coming. Whether it's in the 30s for upstate New York or whether it's in the, you know, high 50s or low 60s in Florida, the fish instinctively know to feed and eat and they do it rapidly. And this is where, again, you're in the backs of creeks. You're in the backs of pockets. You're on top of the flats, on top of the humps and shoals. And the fish are actively feeding. It's one of the funnest times in the fall to fish. 
Uh, I love it. You can catch a lot of fish and the fish are just foraging. They're eating their, their butts off, okay? So the second period, man, it's the fall feed. And that's, that's the funnest of the three periods. But that has to come to an end. And this is the beginning of this third period, which is honestly the trickiest period of the three stages of fall fishing. And I like to call this third one the late fall transition. Or another way to say it is that late fall migration. Because what happens in this third stage, this third period, is the fish have fed, right? We just talked about the second one. Imagine eating a giant steak dinner. And before that, you sat down, you had appetizers, you ate the steak, and then you had decided to have a little cheesecake at the end. And you drank like three or four uh, uh, founder's brews as you were eating all that. Dude, you're stuffed. You're fat. And now it's time to go home. It's time to go back home. Fish are in that same mode, okay? So in the fall feed, <clears throat> eating, 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 foraging. But as that water temperature keeps dipping, right? Look, early fall, fall feed, late fall transition. Remember I talked about it? Look, early fall transition, fall feed, late fall. Now that water temperature's really starting to drop down. The air temperature's really starting to drop down. Uh, you're putting on a heavy coat now in certain parts of the country. The leaves have changed totally, right? This is the late fall transition. <clears throat> this is the late fall transition. This is the late fall migration. And the fish are leaving those same places we were fishing in a few weeks ago, right? The backs of the creeks, the backs of those pockets and coves, they're exiting. They're heading out of there. The tops of the humps, the tops of the shoals, those fish that got on top of the flat, now they're leaving. Now they're getting off of that shallower stuff. And the reason's simple. They know it's coming. And what season's coming now? The winter. I don't care where you live. Texas, Florida, California, New York, Canada, New Jersey. The fish know winter's coming. The fish know the coldest air and water period of the year is just a few weeks away. And because of that, the fish exit those places. Guess what? Ready? Here's the beauty of this. The same way they came in. Remember how we talked about the early fall transition? Fish coming in those places, stopping on points, stopping on things that stick out and break the contours, right? They're going to leave the same route. So as they leave the back of that creek, as they leave that cove or pocket, as they fall off of that flat, they're going to follow the contours and they're going to stop at places that stick out and touch those contours, that break those contours. So those secondary points, those big isolated docks and trees on natural lakes, those points of weeds, those isolated boulders that sit and break those contours heading off of the flat, coming out of that creek and pocket, that's where the fish are going to stop. The beauty of this period, listen to me, they're not feeding heavily like they were in the fall feed, but here's the beauty of the late fall transition. As they leave, as they start exiting and heading toward that winter spot, they can see it, right? They're looking out. They're looking out of that pocket in that creek and they're going, that's where I'm going to spend my winter. As they leave and they stop on these very predictable places, they're not feeding actively as much, but guess what? They're ganged up because every fish that was feeding in that creek or pocket or on that flat, they all leave the same way and they're ganged up. I've had it in this fall period where I found a little creek channel bend that touched a secondary point and it had like a stump or a brush pile on it. I've had periods in this late fall transition where with a crankbait, I catch them every cast. I can remember a Texas Toyota uh, Bass Classic I fished years ago where I found a sandbar point that had a few isolated pieces of brush on it. 
I caught him every cast for 40, 50 casts in a row. That's the magic of this period. They gang up and they stop on these very predictable places. Um, so as those fish migrate back out, as they head to their wintering holes, they're stopping on predictable places and you can catch them. They're still feeding, they still eat. If a bait fish swims by them, and, and remember, here's the other thing on that late fall transition, the bait's headed that way too. The bait doesn't stay back there the whole fall. The bait is also leaving and exiting. So as that bait leaves, as the bass leave and they stop on these little places on the way out, you could have some amazing days in that late fall transition as well. Um, you know, let me summarize it by saying that after that late fall transition period, you're gonna start seeing some of the coldest water of the year. And that's the signal of your winter pattern. And we're gonna do another Ike in the shop and another episode talking about wintertime fishing as well. Um, but then those fish finish that migration and they end up where they're gonna spend their winter, where they're gonna spend the coldest water period of the year. Uh, man, that was a long one. That was so much information uh, for you, more theory-based. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it because it is very predictable that these same things happen year after year after year. It's the same migration, whether you're in upstate New York or Florida, whatever part of the country you're from, look at it as the fall, not just lumped together as one thing, but three very distinctive periods. Think about how those fish are migrating and remember, in the fall, it's all about bait. I hope you enjoyed this episode of In the Shop. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, stop real quick and hit that subscribe button down there. We're gonna get you really good content every week, new stuff every week. Uh, if you're already subscribed, do me a favor, tell your fishing buddy, your fishing partner about the channel. Let them subscribe as well. They're gonna get some good information out of it too. Uh, good luck, good fishing and great fall fishing. It's, it's a great period of the year to catch big bass. See you later.